The South American nation of Ecuador is currently suffering through its worst economic crisis in decades. Poverty is skyrocketing, corruption is rampant, and the U.S.-backed government has shown itself to be deeply undemocratic. On February 7th, Ecuador will hold a historic election that could fundamentally change its direction, moving the nation away from its current neoliberal policies and reliance on Washington, and restoring the socialist-oriented program of former President Rafael Correa, who launched a progressive movement called the Citizens' Revolution. Today, Ecuador's sitting president, Daniel Moreno, has a mere 8% approval rating, making him the most unpopular leader in the country's modern history. Under Moreno's rule, the government has imprisoned and exiled many left-wing political leaders, banned pro-Correa electoral candidates, gutted social programs, destabilized Latin American regional institutions, and heavily indebted Ecuador with billions of dollars in loans. And in a historic act of betrayal, Moreno renounced the asylum that Correa had given to WikiLeaks publisher Julian Assange, allowing British authorities to enter Ecuador's sovereign embassy in London and arrest the Australian journalist. Unemployment, inequality, and hardship have reached peak levels with more than 58% of Ecuadorians living in poverty and nearly 39% in extreme poverty, according to the United Nations. Meanwhile, Ecuadorians have endured a catastrophic response to the COVID-19 pandemic, with one of the highest per capita death rates in the entire world. In 2020, Ecuador's GDP shrunk by an estimated 11%. For sale and for rent signs are visible on properties throughout the capital of Quito. I visited Ecuador this February to cover its election and speak with citizens who have borne the brunt of the economic crisis overseen by the country's U.S.-backed government. As you can see behind me, I'm at a rally here in Quito, Ecuador. This is the closing of the presidential electoral campaign. The election is going to be held on February 7th. And this has been a really brutal election for a lot of people. The current US-backed government of Lenin Moreno has aggressively tried to prevent the left wing from being able to participate in the election, banning the party of the left wing candidate, Andres Arauz, and also preventing the former presidential candidate, Rafael Correa, from being vice president. Despite all of the many obstacles presented by the Lenin Moreno government, the left-wing citizens' revolution movement is still very powerful. As you can see, there are thousands of people gathered here to participate in this process. I'm going to speak with some of them and see, hear what they have to say. Apoya la revolución ciudadana porque durante los 10 años que estuvo Rafael Correa al frente del país, lo sacó adelante de muchas formas, desde la educación, desde la construcción de obras, la salud, y nunca dejó de lado al pueblo, sino que siempre estuvo preocupado de todos los beneficios para el pueblo. Yo apoyo a la Revolución Ciudadana porque te, tuvimos con Rafael Correa un 10 años de década ganada, que la década ganada significa eh, prosperidad, significa educación, significó lo que es salud, dignidad, dignidad en sí. Y por ello tenemos a nuestro binomio Andrés Arauz y Carlos Rabascal, es para salir adelante, para acabar con la iniquidad, la oligarquía. La derecha nos tiene asumidos y nosotros vamos a rescatar el país. Muy bien. El gobierno que está terminando en este rato, un gobierno con un control absoluto sobre los medios de comunicación, sobre las cortes, sobre todos los poderes del, del Estado, no por voluntad democrática de la gente, sino que por operaciones fraudulentas, no hay ningún eufemismo. Tenemos una base norteamericana hoy día en las Islas Galápagos, definida por el inteligente ministro de Defensa como las Islas Galápagos como un portaaviones naturales. Lo único que nos falta a nosotros es colocar la bandera norteamericana en un lado de Carondelet y la bandera de la Unión Europea en el otro lado de Carondelet, porque aquí no se decide absolutamente nada. Ecuador's February 7th election has boiled down to two main choices, and the difference could not be any starker. 
On one side is the right-wing candidate Guillermo Lasso, a banker who served as economic minister when Ecuador suffered through a financial meltdown in 1999 that bankrupted millions of citizens and destroyed their life savings. Lasso, who has long been credibly accused of corruption and the use of offshore tax shelters, has the staunch support of Ecuador's wealthy economic elites and the United States. On the other side is left-wing candidate Andres Arauz, a young economist who follows in the footsteps of former President Correa and his movement, known as Correismo, and wants to bring back his socialist policies. Arauz has built a huge grassroots following in a presidential campaign based on his promises to tax the rich, to give $1,000 checks to a million poor and working class families, and to abandon suffocating and extremely unpopular economic agreements that Ecuador's current Moreno government signed with the International Monetary Fund, or IMF. Arauz also plans to revive regional institutions to integrate Ecuador's economy with other Latin American countries. And he wants to return to closer business ties with China, just as his mentor Correa had done. Virtually all polls show Arauz leading and likely to win the presidential election, if the vote is free and fair. The fact that the leading presidential candidate wants to reject the IMF and seek deeper economic relations with Beijing has angered Washington, which has meddled in Ecuador's internal affairs and thrown its weight behind the banker Lasso. Aquí en el imperialismo lo que hemos tenido es la oligarquía, totalmente la opresión, la discriminación muchas veces también, la falta de derechos. Aquí la, la lucha de la mujer revolucionaria es conseguir totalmente nuestros derechos como mujeres, porque quiero que mi país nuevamente volvamos a tener los derechos como mujeres, como seres humanos. Lamentablemente, una vez que se alcanzó el gobierno, se produjo una venta, una venta de ese gobierno a los sectores oligárquicos, a la banca, a los medios de comunicación que están justamente cooptados por los grupos de poder. Ha sido totalmente una destrucción, como se ha hablado, una traición, no a Rafael Correa, sino al pueblo ecuatoriano. Y lo traicionó uniéndose a los banqueros, a Lazo principalmente, al FMI, a Estados Unidos, a todo lo que de cierta manera nos causó daño. Under the U.S.-backed Lenin Moreno administration, Ecuador has attacked regional institutions, withdrawing from the Bolivarian Alliance, or ALBA, a trade bloc of left-wing Latin American countries, and taking Ecuador out of the Union of South American Nations, or UNASUR, kicking out the international body's Quito-based headquarters. While overseeing widespread corruption and looting of public money, the Moreno government also ensnared Ecuador with billions of dollars in loans from the IMF. As part of an austerity package demanded by the IMF, Moreno announced in 2019 a series of aggressive neoliberal reforms, which included cutting 23,000 state sector jobs and ending long-time fuel subsidies, which nearly doubled the price of gasoline. The proposed austerity package kicked off a massive uprising in October 2019. Labor unions organized strikes, while indigenous groups and students held massive protests that brought the country to a halt. The Moreno government responded with brutal violence. Police shot protesters, killing several, injuring more than 1,000, and detaining another 1,000. The Correista movement decided to close its electoral campaign this February 4th at a park in the heart of the capital, Quito, known as the Parque del Arbolito. This location was deeply symbolic because it was here that the uprising against Moreno's neoliberal reforms started in October 2019. No ha habido libertad de expresión con la prensa, con el CNE. Hemos peleado duro y feo. Hemos venido a luchar aquí en la, lo que es la capital. Es real los videos que, se, que pasaban gente muerta en las calles. Sentimos un total abandono sin gobierno, sin política pública, sálvese como pueda, y es que sin vacunas, sin política, sin atención médica, 
pero con mucho dinero los banqueros y los corruptos de este país. De lo que se trata hoy día es la, la reconstitución de todos los organismos que han sido desmantelados, que han sido desmantelados por las, por, por las oligarquías. Eh, UNASUR es uno de ellos, tal vez el más, el más importante. Y esta segmentación oprobiosa que ha causado el gobierno que va saliendo en contra de Cuba, en contra de Venezuela, en contra de Bolivia, en contra de Nicaragua, en contra de todo lo distinto, a este país a un aislamiento absoluto. Aquí se han inventado, por ejemplo, la Guerra Fría, ¿no? eh, la versión ecuatoriana de la Guerra Fría. Entonces somos enemigos de Rusia, somos enemigos de los chinos, somos enemigos de los venezolanos, somos enemigos de los cubanos, somos enemigos de todo lo distinto que se le ocurra a la oligarquía acá. Rafael Correa remains the most popular politician in Ecuador. In his 10 years as president, from 2007 to 2017, Ecuador's poverty rate plummeted, the minimum wage increased rapidly, and the government invested billions of dollars in universal health care, education, and advanced infrastructure. While Ecuador is still a developing, formally colonized nation, it has significant natural resources that could make the country rich. These include substantial oil and mineral reserves, such as gold, silver, and copper. For decades, these resources were monopolized by a small handful of Ecuadorian oligarchs. Correa was the first leader to use the country's plentiful natural resources to instead fund popular social programs. Correa also pursued an independent foreign policy, strengthening relations with China and Russia, collaborating closely with other socialist governments in Latin America, and committing Ecuador to political and economic integration with its neighbors. Correa spoke with the Gray Zone editor-in-chief Max Blumenthal about the stakes of the February election. En Ecuador se ha roto permanentemente el Estado de Derecho. Se apoderaron del Estado con una consulta absolutamente fraudulenta, sin control constitucional, manipulada. Y, se, y no contentos con eso, se apropiaron de esa forma de un consejo que nombraba a todas las autoridades de control que el gobierno de Ecuador se ha sometido totalmente a los intereses de Estados Unidos, sobre todo para tratar de perseguir a los líderes progresistas nacionales y tratar de atentar contra la estabilidad de Venezuela. Es evidente aquello. Entonces están realmente desesperados, son capaces de cualquier cosa, porque para ellos lo peor es que nosotros ganemos, porque saben que tendrán que responder ante la justicia. No somos gente vengativa, pero hay que hacer justicia, sin odio, pero con memoria. Entonces están dispuestos a todo. Yo sí le pido al mundo estar muy atentos sobre lo que pasa en Ecuador en estas elecciones. Under Correa's leadership, Ecuador launched the Progressive Citizens Revolution, which fundamentally transformed the country and is still a powerful force today. At the rallies in the country's two biggest cities, Quito and Guayaquil, working class Ecuadorians showed their undying support for this revolution. Yo ya viví 10 años de cambio, viví 10 años de eh, equidad, Le, eh, viví 10 años de política pública en favor del pueblo, de las mayorías, y por eso yo quiero que vuelva la revolución ciudadana. Ahora mismo hemos vivido un proceso electoral eh, que ha sido muy complicado, ya que hemos tenido eh, que ver la forma, la manera de cómo a través de medios alternativos poder eh, tener canales a, la, a través de las cuales poder comunicar a la población el plan de gobierno de Andrés Arauz. Que es una revolución que nos ha dado prueba de libertad, independencia y de justicia social. Por eso yo apoyo a Andrés Arauz y Carlos Rabascal. Esto decidí usar desde que comenzó el periodo de Rafael Correa Delgado porque es un revolucionario que hizo revolucionar el país. Y a través de su gobierno nos dio libertad, nos dio equidad, nos dio el apoyo a la mujer. Nearly all polls show leftist candidate Andrés Arauz easily winning Ecuador's February 7th election. 
Yet the Ecuadorian media's reliance on a corrupt firm funded by right-wing candidate Guillermo Lasso to produce exit polls after the vote is one of many signs of potential irregularities. The Ecuadorian people, however, seem ready to fight. The massive turnouts for the Correista movement's demonstrations in the major cities, with tens of thousands of working-class people flooding the streets and parks, reflects a popular outrage in the country and a widespread yearning to return to the citizens' revolution.